All right, guys, as I am still working on the truck, I'm going to today take a tow hitch because I'm realizing that the gas tank might be problematic. And I thought it'd be fun for you guys to see how you take a gas tank out of a truck. Now, uh, something else I wanted to point out is what are some of the tools that I use to help when I'm recording? And you saw the tripod that I had, the really big one uh, that I used the other day, but I also have a smaller one. I have this one here. And uh, this one's kind of great because it's tiny enough to go into the lower places with me on the truck. And I can show you different angles of how I work. But I also have this nifty little doodad right here. And this guy expands. Let me see if I can do it with my hands. Awesome. Yeah, it expands and allows you to go around the phone. And the screw that you see here is a universal size. So it fits on any camera top that you have, which is great. So I'm going to use this little tripod that I have here to show you how I'm going to take the, uh, how to take the tow hitch out of the truck. All right, people, so here's what we're going to take out today. This guy right here. So this isn't really in the way of anything that I'm doing currently on the truck. Uh, however, when you look at it, it's all kinds of rusty and kind of blistering and all that. And what I want to do is I really want to take all this out because I'm realizing this being the gas tank, um, I'm seeing where I can paint up all the metal up top and make it nice. Like I did this on the front of the truck and I'm definitely going to do it on the rear. But uh, one of the big challenges for me uh, right now is one, let's just take out the tow hitch. So let me show you some of the things we got to take out. Uh, you'll see here, this is one of, there's one here, that's two, and that's three bolts that are holding this side. And then there's another three on this side that have to come out. Um, now these bolts, if you can see the thread, it's kind of rusty. And what will happen is if you try to run uh, the bolt down, like try to uh, break it off, you have a tendency of stripping and breaking the bolt with that. So you got to clean it up. So the guys who know about WD-40, it's going to save us. And I'm seeing that there is a bolt on the top that's going to come out. And then there's one on the bottom. So I'm going to need uh, probably a socket on the bottom and then a small wrench on the top. I'll show you the box wrench and how we're going to do it. All right. So I'm going to share with you <clears throat> some of the tools I'm going to use. Let's start with these right here. These are Industro closed box wrenches. Uh, why they call them closed boxes because the circle is closed. You uh, have probably seen wrenches where there's an opening at the at the uh, end of this. Uh, so this would be a combination if if it was a open here and a closed down here, which I'll show you that. Uh, but this one is a box wrench set. So uh, basically both ends are are closed. <clears throat> and I love the old Industro, uh, partially because of the typeface that they have. I don't know if you can see that, but also just how they used to come up with these cool little gadgets to hold all the uh, the tools in. And essentially, if you take all of these out, you have these little screws on the top here, if you see them, uh, those would hook into the wall, and then these would conveniently get hooked onto here. And then you could just hang this on your wall as such. So it doubles as a carrier and as a wall hanger, which is always awesome. I love that kind of stuff that they were thinking about back in the 50s and 70s. <clears throat> now this over here, is my breaker bar. Now, you'll notice a breaker bar is just one long slab of metal. It's about maybe uh, two feet long, and it has a half-inch head on the top here. This is very important because depending on the size of the bolt you have to take off will dictate what size um, uh, size that you use here. So there's half-inch, which is this. There's three-quarters and there's an inch, which are obviously much bigger. Uh, then there is uh, three-eighths, which is what I normally use, and then a uh, quarter inch, which is for more delicate stuff. Now, with the bigger head here, it requires a bigger head for your sockets. So you'll notice that these are considerably bigger than what I've been using. And again, that's because the tow hitch is obviously going to be pulling something big. So chances are the bolts you're going to put on it is going to be big as well. I also have out here my jack stands, which I'll show you what I'm going to use those for. And I also have what lubricates the world. It ain't money, people. It's WD-40. So I have here my little uh, metal brush. I'm gonna use this to loosen up all the all the metal underneath. So I use a little metal brush because that helps in getting away any debris that might be on the thread. So let me see if I can get this in a good spot. You guys can see work in action. Let's get the tripod set up correctly. Let's contort my body. Let's uh, bend this upward, and let's see, does that help? No, that doesn't really help. That helps, but I can't hold like that. Let's see what that does. 
What's that focused on? Okay, that'll work. My hand's right there. I can go after some of the stuff right here. Okay, so I see there's like this metal. Oh, that's part of the bumper. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this bolt off first. This one right here in the middle, and I'll work on that later. So let's take my little brush here. I'm just going to go right on the threads. It's going to lose any like easy debris that I could break off of it. Same on the top here. It's going to just rub it a little bit. Let's do a little bit on this side as well. Right on top of that. Awesome. Take all that off. Let's see what's happening on that side. Muy bien. Now I'm going to take my WD-40 and I'm just going to just screw it a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go down here. Screw it a little bit on that. It's going to get on the threads. I'm going to give it a second to penetrate. Because that's what this does. I'm going to go over here. Loosen that up a little bit. And you can see I'm using the tip of the uh, of the of the uh, oil container, the little red line, the tube, to sort of spread it around like it's kind of like butter. That helps it push around a little bit. Now, normally, if the bolt is crazy tight, meaning it's been on there forever, uh, you let it soak overnight. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little risk because a part of me thinks it doesn't matter if these break off because these are looking so old and used that it might be a good idea to replace them anyway once I do put the tow hitch back on. All right, so I'm gonna loosen up that side. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna work on the other side very quickly. Take my brush and, oops, right in my face. Awesome, I hope you guys, I'll definitely keep that in the recording. Uh, all right, and you see, can you see what's going on there? A little bit, not so much. I'm just gonna loosen it up some. Awesome, go to this one. Those wires right there, that actually is the wire setup for the um, tow hitch lights. So when I connect it to something, the lights will, uh, when I hit the brake light, that's how it turns the lights on in the back. It's just very easy to move out of the way. But, all right. So we broke up some of the stuff right here. And I'll put this on stop. And I'm gonna juice it up and get ready. All right, so I got a pretty good angle for you guys to see. So you see I have my uh, larger socket on the bottom here. I believe this is, this is seven eighths. And what's above that is three quarters, right? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that's on there snug. You wanna flush down, take my breaker bar, put this bad boy right in here. And as the world knows, it's ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. And it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. There we go. And now I'm going to crank this bad boy. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Gotta get some leverage. Try to loosen it up a little bit. Let's try something else, which is loosen it down some. There we go. Get it on there. <clears throat> yeah, it's on there pretty tight. There we go. There we go. And boom. It's loose. So now, I'm going to crank it off. This is, I can tell this boy's been on there for a long time. And now that I'm loosening it up, you could also, when you put it on, something that people like to do is a little bit of back and forth because it helps the threads. As it's going up and down, there's still oil in there. And you can see how it's even spinning looser. That oil is going up and down the thread and loosening up other junk that might be in the way. And like I said, from here, pretty basic. I could probably put a ratchet on this or a socket. I'm sorry, uh, a ratchet versus the breaker bar, and that'll help me get it off quicker. Which, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Let me go do that. I'll speed this up. All right, people. I decided to break out the big guns. What's big guns, you may ask? This right here is my impact socket. This bad boy is what's used to help take things on and off when I'm feeling a little lazy. And I have two different battery packs. This is a smaller battery pack, which is used for my little drill that I have here. And then I got a bigger battery pack, which, where did it go? There it is, right in front of me. That teeth had bite me. It's a bigger battery pack. And you can see it's a bigger battery. This doesn't impact the performance of the tool. It just means that it has a longer life of using versus me having to recharge it. And then I also brought out some impact sockets. 
So there's a difference between the silver sockets that you saw and the impact sockets. Silver sockets, or the chrome ones that you see over there, <clears throat> those are meant, mostly meant for using by hand, which means uh, like any, like the breaker bar or ratchet or something like that, because this here has a higher torque by this gun. And this is a different metal that's used. And you can also see that they're far thicker in their diameter. And what I need to find, that's 5 16 that's 7 8 Was it 7 8 Yeah, I think it was 7 8 So here's 7 8 and I also have a, uh extension as well. And uh, again, this is meant for impact sockets. You can see it says half inch on there. And that's all going to connect as it normally would. So let me set this up real quick. Take this bad boy, plug that in there. This is pretty simple. Just slide it in. Little smack. Got this. <clears throat> and now we're ready to cause some damage. And what I also like, it's got this cool little light down here. If you can see that, that really helps as you're working because then the light's shining directly on the spot. You can't imagine how many times working underneath a car, I'd go bananas trying to see stuff, squinting, turning my phone on, oi, all that to see. And that tool comes with it. <clears throat> and I'm also going to put my, my little light here underneath as well to help us get better light underneath the truck. All right, people. So... Just to bolt in, align the tool correctly, a little wiggle. Of course, I had it going on the wrong way. Now, put it back on. Let's do it the right way this time. see the bolt at the top the wrench spun off which all that means is because I got to do this one-handed for you guys oh, big old mess I'm gonna put this off to the side there <laughs> you know what this might not work with the tool I may need to do uh, let me see what I can do here get this to go you might see my big rock head which that's okay I guess all right help it here we go Size. Just a second. Yeah, that's the side. There we go. All right. All right. What happened? And it's not coming off for whatever reason now. Huh. All right. Maybe. That tool doesn't want to do it. Let's go back to the breaker bar. Let's find out what the problem is. I was doing this so well when it was manual. Oh, this thing is stuck now. All right, hold on. Let's try doing it by hand again. There we go. I might just do it by hand. How would it? I don't know what tool fight me on it. Thought I could get fancy for you guys. No point in doing that. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that the tool didn't do squat. Get this off. I'll have to ask Vajra what impact tools he's using. Special shout out to Satish. Pretty soon I'll be working on your Camry, sir. Let's see how it might work together after this. Oh, something else. So I'm taking the middle one off because this one is not going to make the tow hitch fall off. So the other ones are actually holding it on. So I can take out the middle ones first. And then I'll work on getting the other ones off momentarily. Alright, that's a lot of that. Oh, I'm gonna get one bolt off and then I'm gonna turn off the camera and get the other ones off. Move on to phase two with you guys. 
you have to see me doing all my muscle work. Special shout out to Lee Delgado. This is how I keep myself in shape, sir. I don't need to lift weights. It's going to break off rusty bolts. <clears throat> I feel like I'm on the, uh, what's that tool or that, that uh, exercise where you're like uh, doing the lats. I get the name of it, of course. <clears throat> All right, he's got about another couple twists. So, guys, I just want to take a quick second and, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, like, why do you work on these old cars? Why do you do this kind of stuff? And if you could hear it right now, it is it is super quiet out here, very peaceful. And there's another thing that I love about working on the old trucks, and that is uh, it's an escape from technology. So I'm so often working with, I don't know, APIs, code, layout, pixels, all that fun stuff. And that's all great and dandy. But when you work on, you know, something like this, where it's a totally different world, to get your brain thinking in other ways, in a lot of ways, I find it to be relaxing because the tech side gets a chance to chill out and go back to its normal size instead of it always being stretched all day long. And then I get to focus on something like this, but it has very little to do with, you know, pixels and all that. And it's got more to do with just like physical strength and the like. So I just want to share that thought with you guys. All right. So like a goofball, I jumped a little bit ahead of myself and you'll see that I have the jack stand already propped up. Reason being is that I took out two of the bolts on the left side and I thought, ah, it should hold up. And uh, lo and behold, the half of the um, tow hitch came off. So that's why I brought out the jack stands because I don't have a person out here to hold it up. And uh, But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, now that that's in place, I'm gonna go on the opposite side here and I'm gonna take out these other bolts and then you're gonna see me drop this whole thing down. What do I do here? All right, guys, so I wanted to share with you, uh, looking at this, you'll see I have the bolt is loosened up in the rear of the uh, uh, tow hitch assembly, and I'm keeping the bolt on, and the reason why is that as I loosen up this one, this is going to come crashing down, and this is, when it's, this is what's going to save it from falling directly on my face as it comes down. So I'm just going to, you know, tighten it up just a little bit. It's flush with the base of the thread. And then as I, loosen up this, <laughs> as I loosen up this one, uh, it's going to start to come down, but it thankfully will not fall on my face. All right, so a moment ago, I just broke the bolt off with the ratchet or the breaker bar. Now I'm going to loosen up this nice ratchet here. And you can already see how easy this is using a ratchet versus the breaker bar. The ratchet's good once you get it off. You loosen it up, then you can go with this. And you can see how it just moved a little bit. Yep, see that? It's starting to come down. As I put a little pressure on it, bolt tightened up a little bit. Of course, the socket rolled away. I'm trying to do this, I'm balancing it with my neck. Uh, it's not as easy. Here we go. I should get an award just for how I just balance all that all right let's see yeah, do it by hand gets tight again I'll break out the ratchet all right that's out now here's the fun part I'm gonna put these two bolts at the side here I'm gonna go to the left because that's where the bolt hold it on delicately move out of the way I'm safe, which is awesome. It's starting to rain, which means I gotta get out of here pretty soon. Let me see if I can get this bad boy propped up for all you wonderful human beings. All right, so now I have this here. I'm gonna put this over here. So hold it up for me. Remember, safety first. Now, I know this side is all loose. All the bolts are off. There's only one bolt holding on all in the back. And I'm gonna try to undo that from here. All right. And notice how safe I am. I'm far away from this. So if it falls out, it doesn't hurt me. I'm gonna align that. Boom. Now, this should be safe. 
Once I take this bolt out, got everything right there. There we go. Now it's on the jack stands. And now, from this side here, move this out, drop it down, boom, put that down there. Get some of the tools out of the way. We'll do the same thing over here. Or, depending on how far it comes down, I might just take it right out. This should. Boom. Look at that. All right. And I see there's a middle piece in here. That goes there. This one goes with the middle over here. Now I can take the toe hitch out. Oh, this thing is heavy. All right. This require my big boy strength. Oh. All right, guys. So one last thing is I want to share with you how I put this all back together. So I always like to keep all the screws and everything aligned to how it was. Because, you know, in a couple of weeks, I might forget how this whole thing was put together. But when I look at this, I can't tell, did it go this way or did it go this way? And with this one, it's a pretty obvious example. You can see how this is all rusty right here and how that's smooth. Rust is not going to penetrate in between here, but it will go on the outside. So this piece goes this way. And that's how it aligned. And then from there, this bolt goes on top. So the way this assembly goes, which... I'm going to screw this real quick. It's pretty basic, which is this bolt right here goes right in there. And you'll notice, well, you may not think broke down. You might notice that the bolt has a slight bend in it. And that's because as I was turning it, uh, it was uh, twisting out which inevitably caused it to bend, which is fine because now seeing that I'm probably going to get a new one. So pound it down a little bit. Awesome. And then, like I said, put these pieces back on. That's a good way to do it, but you get the idea. Just want to show you how I put that back together.